pretty much what this is, is it's the ice and the mash from the ganja, which is the trimmings after they manicure it. And I mix it in with the ice and I let it sit for anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes to let it get nice and cool. Because the thing is you want to make the ganja mash cool to make the THC crystals on the top of the bulbous trichromes hard so they break off and fall to the bottom of the buckets. So now I'm going to use cooler water because up here <laughs> all you have is a tank water and it's real warm. So if you put a bunch of ice in it and then you use the warm tank water, it pretty much ruins what you've been doing. So I, crack, I just keep my inside of my cooler clean and I use all the cool water from inside the cooler so it doesn't degrade the ice so fast. Take this and pretty much you just fill it up. You're going to fill this up till right to where it gets to the top right about this the lowest part of the ganja that's visible because it's all going to pretty much settle down once you start spinning it and the trick is you want it real cold so sometimes you'd rather add ice instead of water but you have to add water at some point so that looks like see i can just start to see the ganja at the bottom at the lowest point, but it's sometimes it's hit or miss. You might have to add some water, add some ice. No exact. Oh shit! I want to just add whatever little ice I have left. No water or anything. It's just off a cold night. Yeah, man, it gets cold. You keep going around here, man. That in a cold shower or jump in the ocean. <laughs> That's all you can do. Yeah, so many other things to do down here that some people would think this is a waste of time, but, you know, when you're going to be down here for a while and you enjoy the finer things, then you're more of a connoisseur than just a, you know, high on. <laughs> you're a teacher, man. Well, I'm your herbalist, not just a roster. <laughs> right now, I'm just going to start mixing. I don't know, I might need more water. This is pretty much a test thing right here. Okay. I'm going to need more water because I, I didn't put enough water. See, I wasn't sure about how much ganja I put in here. I wasn't sure about how much mash I put in here because I was down to the last little bit and I wanted to get it all spun up. So it's a big batch. <laughs> it ended up being a bigger batch than I thought it was. And a lot of the ice is still solid in here. None of it melted out. I thought maybe sitting out there in the sun. Some of it would have melted out. Is this just leaf or is it yeah, bugs? It, yeah, it's just, ma well, it's it, it's a mix. The mash down here is pretty much a mix of all the leaves and stuff that they trim off and all the, like, unsellable buds. Pretty stalk much. Too? Yeah. Stalk? yeah, when you get the original mash, I wish I still had. The mash came in this. Yeah. I had this. This was full of mash. Okay. And it was eight and three quarters pounds of mash. Okay. So it had all different stuff in it. Yeah, you know, I mean, I had to, you have to pick through the mash down here because you have to pick through the mash down here because you'll find all kinds of stuff in it, like wire and roots and chunks of dirt. I found fish bones. <laughs> you'll, find, you'll find all kinds of interesting stuff. You'll find people's, yeah, like, rizzlas, you know, where they rip off the glue and they throw so the rizzlas away. So that's important to get out of it? Yeah, or? yeah, because you don't want, well, especially the metals and the sharp things like that because they'll damage your bags. And the bags are, you know, you don't want to damage your bags because you did spend money for them. So you want to keep them in the best condition you can. So if you put the metal in here and you start spinning it around, you know, you'll damage the inside of your bag. You don't want the thicker stalks and roots in there also because the big thick stalks could stick through the bottom of the bag when you're mixing. And the roots, pretty much there's nothing contained on them that you want and they're usually covered with dirt because it's pretty much the roots of the plant. Okay. Right. Another thing I've seen is when you use more water, sometimes it seems that you get more because it seems like you get a layer of like, uh, you know, it's kind of like a gray area where the ganja settles up and the ice mixes up and you have that layer of like thin water where, you know, your trichomes can really fall down to your screens. So, you know, 
But this is a big batch of mass. This is good. How many be. pounds would you say before the water went in? Oh, actually, probably not even a pound. I'd say between half and three quarters of a pound. But I got enough ice in here now. I got a lot of ice. See, and that's what you want. But the thing is, it makes it so hard to mix. And then people say, use hand mixers. Use hand mixers. And eh, look at it. You think I can get a hand mixer in here? <laughs> you know? So I'm pretty much as you can stir the stuff up from the bottom because I layered it when I first set this out when we showed you the bucket in the beginning yeah. where it just had the ice and the ganja in it well what I do in the beginning to cool it off is I layer it in the bags I put all the bags in which we'll show later and I will layer ice and mash and ice and mash and ice and mash till I see it fill up and then I'll leave it out and cool it so that it's layered now this will start to, as you mix it up, it'll start to break down, so it'll get easier to mix. And you'll mix the same mash twice, so the second spin is usually a lot easier. But this one's going to be rough, because you can hear the ice. Can you hear it? Oh yeah. When I go in there, there's a lot of ice, and it's thick to the bottom, and because I layered it, there's a lot of ganja still on the bottom. And remember I said I wanted to create that gray area at the bottom where a thing would fall through easy. See, I might have just put a little bit too much because I wanted to get this done and finish up my vacation. <laughs> so how and much weight? Is, I need time. I need a watch. Because now this is ready for me to start getting into it. And I need a watch or something. Um, love? I'm trying to make myself prettier, you know. But uh, when you're spinning ice, you don't want to spin it for any longer than you have to. So I make sure I set it, you know, an alarm clock so that when I'm done, I'm done. Okay. All right, now the fun part begins. All right. Wonder why I lost a bunch of weight when I, since I've been down here? <laughs> well, you're about to see it. <laughs> Exercise time. Anyway, so, you know, they got, their, down again, they, got the, they got their rowing machines and everything at home. <laughs> you know, I got my, yeah. I got my bucket. Got so I just get up here. Oh, man, the view from here, that's one of the things that makes this really nice. Your, when you get to your vacation, you know, yeah. <laughs> we'll go with you. Well, yeah, well, I'll make a move, why not? Yeah, it's, we're going to be heading as soon as I get out of here. But see, as, see, you can hear it crunching. And as you go around, you can feel it. The ice and everything crunching against the walls of the bag. You want to create fix, friction because what you want is you want to break the bulbous stock trichromes off. So you want to get friction. The ice cools them, gets them brittle. And the friction created by the mixing is what breaks them off and makes them settle to the bottom. So some people use hand mixers, but like I said, it'd be rough to get a hand mix mixer into this. Now the next time we spin it, it'll be a little bit easier because the ice will degrade. And